invite some people to hear this word today because it's going to maximize your life as well as those here in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, uh, God is amazing. He allows things, he orchestrates things for you, even when you don't even know it. <laughs> he gets you prepared for things that you don't even know is coming. And we're going to talk about that this morning. We're going to talk about, we're just going to stay in the same vein that our apostle is ministering on. And he started out speaking, talking to us about the breakthrough. The breaker. God is the breaker. And we're going to talk about the breakthrough to prosperity in renewing your mind. The breakthrough to prosperity in renewing your mind. So it's all connected. Because we need a breakthrough in our minds to get where we need to be. Because our minds have kept us and held us hostage about a lot of things in our life. And if we can break through, break forth out of those things that have held us in a box. And renew our mind in those areas, we'll see our lives transform. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to start off by saying my life. It's being maximized as I'm taught the Word of God because the Word of God is maximizing my life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Apostle, I was saying Apostle started this, so he actually planted the seed, and I'm coming back to water it today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So I'm just going to be sprinkling some water on you today. <laughs> the Holy Ghost is going to cause the increase. Hallelujah of the word that I'm going to speak to you. So we're going to start by <clears throat> talking about prosperity. Hallelujah. So it's a scripture that came to me that tied all of this in that we're going to start with. And that's 3 John 1, 2. Hallelujah. I praise family. I know you have your phones, your Bibles or whatever. I want you to follow along with us this morning. Just put these scriptures on your notepad so that you can go back and meditate and uh, uh, read them over for yourselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> you have it. You say amen. Amen. Third John 1, 2. And the King James says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. Hallelujah. I'm going to double back with that in the Amplified. And it says, Beloved, I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health physically, just as I know your souls prosper spiritually. Hmm. The Amplified, you know, always breaks stuff down a little to our understanding. You know, that version always, it's always good to read a couple of other versions to get a better understanding because in all our getting, we want to get a what? We want to get an understanding, especially spiritually, okay? So, <clears throat> I brought this scripture up because he wishes above that we may prosper. And I want to ask you a question right here. What is prosperous or prosper? Just think about it. What does it mean to you? Yeah, well, just think about that. What is prosperous or prosper prosperity in your eyes in your mind right now what does it mean to you so when you think about it 
we're going to start right there, what you think. Because what God thinks and what you think might be two different things. Okay, so I looked up the word prosperous, and, and, and it's not just about financial. It's about being comfortable. It's about being successful. Prosperous is being peaceful. It's talking about healthy and being well off, like people say, well to do. So it's a, it's a broad scope, not just one thing. So when I read that scripture about you prospering in health and in your soul, it's really talked about the spirit, soul, and body. Because you got to prosper in your spirit, man, in your, in your thinking, your brain, in your mind, and physically. We want to prosper in our health, in our well-being. This, it's, it's all a com combination of things. Hallelujah. Being prosperous in every area of life, it starts with the right mindset. That's why I said think about it. You think about where, what is prosperous. I want to be comfortable. I don't want to be in pain. I want to be successful in all that I do. I want to have peace. I don't want to be in turmoil and worried. I definitely want to be healthy so I can go places and do things and not have to worry about yeah, every five minutes I got to sit down or all that other stuff that goes along with being unhealthy, well off. When I'm well off, I'm able to help others. I can be obedient to when God speaks and says, go and help so-and-so or go and give this. That's being well off, over and above. Hallelujah. So when we talk about our mindsets, it's where our, our imagination is. It's our reasoning. It's our understanding. It's our ability to think about things the right way. We're talking about renewing our mind. Breaking through some things that we have been thinking wrong that's causing us not to live a prosperous life. God didn't make us sick. He came that we might be well. He died that we did not have to deal with sickness or disease. God wants us to prosper. That's what his word says. He wants us to be in health. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joshua 1 and 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. That's a familiar scripture for us. But the key to getting it is meditating. Where do you meditate in? Where, what, what? You know, you can meditate in your heart, but it's in your mind because you're thinking. You're flipping it over and over in your mind, the negative or the positive, right? So if you're meditating on the word, that's going to cause you to start shifting your thoughts in that area. So once you identify where you are about certain things that we've already talked about, 
Because you got to identify it before you can actually change it. You have to know that there's an issue or situation in that area before you can change it. Am I thinking right or wrong about prosperity? About my health, my well-being, my success? Are you feeling like you're too old to do something? Or you feel like you're too young to do something? Are you allowing the issues of life to stop you and grip you to say that I don't have nothing else to live for? Come on, think about that. I'm trying to help you break through that. Break forth out of it so you can leave it behind and take on what God has said for you in his word about some situations that we deal with. This is just real talk, I praise family. Because I'm receiving this same word that I'm giving. Because I, I need some breakthroughs through some stuff too. Hallelujah. Apostle has been using his favorite scriptures. Romans 12, 1 and 2. And I'm going to read it uh, first in the King James Version. I'm going to go to the message and then the, the Passion Translation because I want to break this all the way down to hit somebody. The King James Version says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Presenting our bodies is just a reasonable service. <laughs> Let me just... <laughs> and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. All right, we're going to let them let them finish. <laughs> Romans 12, 1 and 2 in the Message Bible says, so here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life. He called it ordinary, but we know. We're just talking about life. You're sleeping, what we all do, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture, what you do, that you fit into it without even thinking. Wow. Instead, fix your attention on God. You will be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants for you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. Mm. God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. That's what a renewed mind does. He's telling you from the beginning, take your everyday Life, sleeping, eating, going to work, all of that, and place it as an offering to God. That's submission. When you place it before God and give it to him, he takes good care of you. That's the best, he said, that's the best thing you could ever do. Don't be so well adjusted to what's going on in the world. Oh, my God. I, I, how can you? 
be adjusted to what's going on in the world today. It's too much going on. I can't adjust to that. I don't even want to adjust to it. I don't want to conform to the world's way of doing things. I want to be changed from the inside out. Do you? Because when you're changed from the inside out, you don't have to tell nobody nothing. You walk in the room, they already sense a presence. Huh? When you transform from the inside out, people going to be calling you for prayer. That you, people, strangers, going to sense something. They're going to respect the anointing because you're transformed from the inside out. That's what we want. Not just people, but the enemy senses there's something different not to mess with her. Because the power of God is, has transformed you from the inside out. We want to be mature. In the things of God. We don't want to be in, immature babes. We want to know because when you're mature, you do things that mature people do. Let's just say that. Mature people know how to give when the, when the scriptures say give. We don't allow circumstances and situations to speak to us about our giving. We already know because we give, we'll receive. And because we give and uh, tithe and offer that God is going to rebuke the devourer that's taking, that's causing things to take our money. We already know that it's working for us. That's what mature people do. Hallelujah. And let's go to the Passion Translation, because I'm getting excited. Romans 1 and tw one, uh, 12, 1 through 2. Beloved friends, what should be your prop proper response to God's marvelous mercies? I encourage you to su surrender yourselves to God to be his sacrifice. Living sacrifices and live in holiness. Experience all the delights of his heart. For this becomes your genuine expression of worship. Stop imitating the ideas and opinions of the culture around you. But be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. A total reformation. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. That's what a renewed mind would do for you. Hallelujah. Do you want a renewed mind? Do you want to be transformed? You know, there's a movie called Transformers, right? I just thought about that. Transformers, more than meets the eye. Yeah. You might see me this way, because a lot of people knew me back when. You may see me, oh, she looked the same, but I'm not. <clears throat> oh, yeah, you know, you go around your high school classmates and all that. Oh, girl, you ain't changed. You look the same. I look it, but I ain't. Don't let me transform into... <laughs> Don't, but I, I'm, I, I'm serious. I went from here to here. I may look the same, but I'm not. You know, people say, you know, that's all the time. I thought about this yesterday. Oh, she done changed. 
Yeah. I sure have. I'm changing for me and for what God has placed on my life. I'm not trying to be the same gal I was back then. I'm not trying to do the same things I was doing back then. That would be immature. For me to be in the will of God, to have a relationship with him and not change. Yeah. I changed. For the better. For me. I'm not living for you anyway. I'm living for God. And if he chooses to change me from the inside out and for me to be who he called me to be, who he predestined me to be, for, for everything that he had for me to be, I'm changing. I'm changing. You know, it starts, I just said that a few minutes ago, it starts with your relationship with God, really. Because he said in his word in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. So if I've accepted Christ, I'm already became new. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become so before I even started renewing my mind, once I gave God my life and repented and confessed him as my Lord and Savior, I was a new creature. All that old stuff had left me. I didn't really know it then, but it had. It didn't take me to start really renewing my mind when I start meditating the word, reading the word, doing the word. It's when this transformation started from the inside out. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, and the good news says this. Anyone who joins to Christ is a new being. The old is gone. The new has come. Have you joined your life with Christ? Have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior? Have you said, I believe that you died for me, that you gave your life so that I could live life and life more abundantly? If you've said that, you're already a new creature. You ain't the same. So it starts with your relationship with God. So you have to renew your mind to that. I'm already new. So my next step is to renew my mind because my mind going to keep me back there. When I'm really new, but I ain't new. You know, the scripture says you can't put new wine in. Uh... I got some new wine. Renewed versus unrenewed. I'm, that's what I'm giving you. You know, so the renewed mind, how they act and move, as opposed to the unrenewed mind. Renewed means to restore to a new condition. Restored to a new condition. Think about that. God wants to restore you to a whole brand new, fresh condition. Do you really want to be renewed to a fresh new condition? I mean, because you start seeing things different once you refreshed, you know? Huh? You go in, refresh your, refresh your house. You know I like to do that. Refresh up some, change out some pillows and some curtains and re clean up some, change the rug and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it looks whole, totally different even though it's the same living room. It's refreshing, renewed. You feel so good. Just sit down and watch little 
flip, flip, flip. F refreshed and nude in your mind will cause you to see things differently. Hallelujah. We want to see things differently. We don't want to see the things that we think we should be seeing. We want to see things in God's perspective. Hallelujah. Renewing your mind to the fact that God has a plan for your life. What about that? Renew your mind to the fact that God has a plan and a path already for your life. Even when issues come up. Even when situations and circumstances arise. Because we don't know what tomorrow's going to hold. We really don't. God can reveal some things to you. But just last month, we didn't think the surge was going to come right back up like it did, did we? I don't know about you, but I didn't. I thought we was really on the road to recovery. Just last month, I know we were saying we was preparing for uh, the hurricane season. But it didn't, wasn't nothing moving out there. Now, all of a sudden, it's two, three coming up. Okay, so circumstances, situations, issues, some inward, some outward, we, we have to renew our minds to know that God already has a plan for us, a path for us. You will not allow those issues and circumstances that come into your life to dictate your life. We have the power to cast down those negative thoughts that come. You know, the what ifs. Ooh, girl, what if so-and-so happened? What if that happened? You know, somebody happened. It happened to someone, so-and-so. Uh, those thoughts are negative, and they come against what God has already said for you. You cannot meditate and concentrate and give power to those negative thoughts and feelings that come to your mind. Because they do come. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 says right here, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into cap, com, cap, captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. This, we're still talking about the mind, where your thought life is. So he said in his word that he's given you the ability to do that. The power to cast down those imaginations, those negative things that might try to come in and flood your mind. Oh, I'm going to die. You know, even those little things you say, girl, this heat going to kill me. You don't want to have no heat stroke and die? For real? I praise family. You know some of y'all done said some crazy stuff like that. Just a little thing. Something going to kill you. Don't say that. That's a thought. And then you let it come out your mouth. Fix that. No, it's not going to kill me. It might have me tired and drained. I'm going to go and get something to drink and cool off so I can be refreshed. You know, cast those thoughts down and bring into captivity, yeah, help me, those thoughts that agree with what God said about you. That's how you renew your mind. You start with those little thoughts that you catch, that you see, that you hear, that you know ain't right, but you want to think them anyway. You want to grab them real quick. That starts the process of renewing your mind. You want to cast it down and throw it out. And you want to replace it with the word of God, I praise family. You want to continue to meditate on the Word of God concerning those issues. Hallelujah. 
you know, even God thinks the positive thoughts towards you. So why are we not? He knows the thoughts that he has towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil. So if his thoughts are good towards us and to us and for us, then we can renew our mind to the words that he has given us. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. What's your expectation? I'm, I'm, I'm helping you think about what, what is your expectation in certain areas. I expect to be totally healed in my body and medication free. That's what I expect. I, want, I expect to be successful in all that I do. That's what I expect. He said he's going to give me an expected end. What do you expect? So don't concentrate on those negative things. Don't concentrate on the, what, what the enemy is doing, like our apostles say, the devil this, the devil that. The devil is the devil. Don't, don't even concentrate on what others say that really don't know you. Don't concentrate on those things that people say. Girl, you can't do that. Why well, can't? You start a new career at 55, 56? Yeah. I mean, just little things. Those thoughts that they have don't have nothing to do with what God have for me. The thoughts that God have for me, I'm, agree I'm in agreement with him. He the one that created me. He the one that knew me from before I was in my mother's womb. He's already had a path laid out for me when I got here and said, you're going to be successful on this, on this path. I, I'm going to go with him. I want you to renew your mind this morning. If you haven't already started, start the process. Start the process because it's going to be a little process. It ain't going to be overnight where you shift from one place to the other. Trust and believe, baby. It ain't going to be overnight. It wasn't overnight to get you where you at right now. But start the process if you haven't started renewing your mind in some areas so that you can truly have what God has for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A renewed mind does the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. The apostle said that. It helps you to prove the good, the acceptable, and perfect will of God. You might be at the good. It's all good. When you keep on going, you'll reach the acceptable. And then when you're working in the perfect will of God, oh my goodness. The renewed mind, that means anything that comes up, you're not even worried. You don't even give it a thought. Because you already know you can cast that care on him. When things look funny, you say, all is well. Because you already know what the word says about it. You confess it and you keep going. Because we heard this morning, how do we fight our battles? That's what he wants us to do when things come up. It's to worship and praise him and give it to him and act like nothing ain't happening. When you know something is happening, but you're acting like it ain't. Girl, what? God is faithful, honey. They be like, she ain't even worried. Mm -mm. No. Why? Because the scripture said for me not to worry. He says, be anxious for nothing. But in all things, what? 
prayer and supplication. So I'm trusting and believe, baby. I'm praying and supplicating and interceding and what it, praying in the Holy Ghost. That's the first thing I'm going to do. Yeah, it's, it's, it's shifting. Hallelujah. Colossians 3, 1 through 2. In the message, let me, let me read this. This was so good. So if you're serious about living this new resurrec resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorb with the things right in front of you. Look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. So th seeing things from his perspective. Colossians 3, 1 through 2 in the message. Are you serious about living the life that Christ has for you? So it says to pursue those things. Pursue what God is doing. Pursue what he is saying. Okay? See things from his perspective. When you acknowledge God consistently, he will lead you into a renewed life in all of your ways. We know that Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. But let me read this right here in the message. Ha. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. That's Proverbs 3, 5 through, uh, I think, 8. We'll see when I stop. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. He's the one who will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it all, and I don't. Run to God. Run from evil. Your body will glow with health. Your bones will vibrate with life. Honor God with everything you own. Give him the first and the best. Your barns will burst. Your wine vats will brim over. And don't, dear friend, resent God's discipline. Don't sulk under his loving correction. It's the children he loves that God corrects. And a father's delight is behind all of this. Trust God. From the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure everything out on your own. Don't think you have to do everything by your power and by your might. Renew your mind in that area. Oh, I got to go out and get it. And come back with it. Really? You going to go out there and come back with something you don't want? <laughs> I done heard that saying. I got to go out and come back. Go out and get it and come back with it. Really? If you allow God and acknowledge him and trust him, he'll bring it to you. You ain't got to go out and get it. He will show you at home where to go and what to do and how to do it. And when you get there, favor is going to be meeting you. And you won't have to do nothing but say, hi, I'm so-and-so and so-and-so. Oh, you're, you came just in time. We got such and such for you. That's renewing your mind to you not having to do everything you think you got to do in your own power. Because it's in him we live. 
it's in him we breathe. It's in him that we move and have our being. It's in Christ. So because we're in Christ, we're joint heirs with him. And he's going to do those things for us as we renew our mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so faithful. I know you received something because I did while I was ministering. Hallelujah. The breakthrough to prosperity, true prosperity you have with Christ. If you don't have Christ in your life, you're not a new creature. And that's where it starts, I praise family, with the relationship with God. So we have an online pastor. If you need Christ, if you need to confess that he is your Lord and Savior, we want you to reach out to them right now and say, I want to be saved. And I'm going to just say this with me. I repent of my sins. And I confess that you are my Lord. You, I believe that you are the Son of God. And because I believe that, you are my Creator and my Lord and my Savior. Amen. And you are in, now in the, huh, the family of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you prayed that prayer of salvation with us today, we want you to know that we are so excited for the decision that you just made for Jesus Christ. We want you to message us on our Facebook pages, or you can leave a comment down below of how God is moving in your life or how you just accepted Jesus. We would love to hear from you and get back with you on the awesome decision that you just made, the awesome decision in your life that you just made. Hey, before we go, make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so that you know the next time we upload. Remember, we are maximizing your life with the Word of God. We love you. We'll see you next time.